Hey, it's Brent McMahon here. Just gonna give you a little insight into my uh, weekly regimen of body maintenance. I go and see Jamie Grimes at Synergy Health Management and he's a chiropractor that does ART and soft tissue work. Hi, I'm Jamie Grimes, uh, chiropractor at Synergy Health Center. Um, today working with Brent McMahon, who's a uh, multiple time Ironman champion, uh, who comes in regularly for maintenance care, performance care, or if there's ever injuries, we do uh, injury care. Today he came in um, more of our typical maintenance treatments, which sometimes are twice a week, three times a week if he's in town, uh, or even sometimes uh, once a week. Generally, we are always loosening up things like calves. Uh, all you know, runners should have those released. A lot of hip flexor work, a lot of all cyclist runners need those released regularly, quad work, hamstrings, glutes. Uh, we're always checking for imbalances. Um, sometimes if one hip gets tight, creates some pelvic rotation, changes the recruiting patterns of, uh, for example, if the glute maximus isn't firing because there's any pain or it's been overused, the external rotators in the hip, uh, piriformis, gemelli, obturator, and turnus, have to work a little harder. Sometimes that can irritate sciatic nerve. Other times um, it just means they're trying to work harder to do a job that they're not, that's not their primary role. And then hamstrings will start to tighten up as a result because now the hamstrings have to do more hip extension because the glute max isn't working. That's a common thing we see with cyclists and runners in general. Um, so that was one of the issues we worked on today. Uh, we realized his, his right glute maximus wasn't firing before his right hamstring and an ideal pattern would be the glute max goes first and then the hamstring or at least very close together when there's a reversal that usually indicates that the brain is trying to use the hamstring more as the primary extensor in that position which should in that position should be the glute maximus and so it's that revert that just tells us that things aren't firing properly and then it's my job to go in and find out where it is that it's not what's not working why isn't it working is it too tight is there a nerve entrapment is it just the muscle needs to be released because there's metabolic waste and then get that out is it because the pelvis is rotated and it needs to be unrotated so that everything's recruiting from the right position there's a there's a number of different things that cause it and then work that out and hopefully his pelvis becomes balanced and then the muscles start to fire in the right recruitment pattern that's ideal for strength and performance. Um, so that was something today that we saw was a little bit of right PI or right pelvic downslip rotation on his SI joint. Um, external rotator is too tight and the glute maximus wasn't firing properly because of a little bit of pain uh, that's going on where it attaches to the femur and the, into the IT band. And the pain can sometimes inhibit the muscle from firing. Um, the other thing that he had today was he had uh, some tingling in his um, third or fourth and fifth fingers, which is something very new that uh, is possibly from a new bike fit where he's in a piece, he's bent forward more, probably rounding more in the shoulders, um, possibly because of the neck position, but also his, his grips are very skinny on the new setup on his handlebar. So he's having to cock his wrist more and grip harder, which compresses the ulnar nerve in the tunnel of Guyon but also it can, the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle, the flexor, the, the ulnar nerve runs inside the fascia on the underside of the flexor carpi ulnaris, which is the muscle that makes that movement. And if it's really tight, it will compress the nerve and the nerve will start, you'll start to get tingly because of a lack of circulation to the nerve. So it can be that position from either just the flexor carpi ulnaris being too tight and still too tight and we need to release it, or because for three hours plus he was compressing um, that nerve and sometimes you compress something that long it's going to be a few days before it comes back or a combination of both but it can also be from the neck um, in that position there's a lot of pinching of the nerves as they come out of the nerve roots as they come out of the spine and that's actually a position that could be pinching the the c6 c7 t1 nerves which also go to these two fingers so we loosened up the neck uh, did some adjustments some nerve stretches to teach him how to release those and stretch them and just make sure there's lots of blood supply getting back to them and then releasing the flexor carpi ulnaris and the tunnel going on to make sure that those are all uh, released as well. And then hopefully we've hit all, all potential causes, did an adjustment of the neck, 
uh, to make sure that the upper neck, uh, lower neck, sorry, and upper T-spine is moving. Um, and that way, hopefully, we've treated all of them and then some home care exercises so that uh, he can keep them released himself. And usually that should go away within a few days or so. Other than that, we did a spinal adjustment, which we often do um, just to make sure all the joints are moving. Because, you know, if the frame's not moving correctly, then you can do all the soft tissue work you want. If the joints aren't moving, if the frame's not moving, if the frame's not stable, then work on the software is not going to fix a problem if it's from the hardware. So it's a matter of sometimes just you have to keep the spine, the joints moving correctly, not just all soft tissue. So a little bit of chiropractic in addition to some active release, nerve stretching and uh, soft tissue work. Potentially one reason uh, Brent's quad on the left side, the rectus femoris is tighter, rectus femoris is tighter, uh, potentially because of a new bike fit that Brent had where they put some lifts in his shoe to uh, make up for a short leg that Brent has that does change mechanics on the bike. So they can, they can adjust for femur and tibial length, but what by doing that sometimes, it changes the way you recruit the muscles in the pedal stroke and potentially he's having to pull through on the upswing phase of the cycle of the of the crank arm and pull through more so what to, which means he'd be using the rectus femoris more because the rectus femoris is the only quadricep that crosses the hip and the knee all the other quadricep muscles only cross the knee joint and only affect extension of the knee the rectus femoris affects extension of the knee, but it also does hip flexion. So as he comes over, he's got to pull up using the hip flexors and the rectus femoris, but at the simultaneously, the rectus femoris also has to contract to push back through. So it's a common muscle in cyclists that gets really tight, especially with big gear work, um, like threshold work, big gear work, hills, if you're really recruiting and pulling. Um, and in this case, it could be just because of a change of mechanics with the leg length with a new bike setup. Um, so we worked on that for the one quad. And then just in general with cycling, the quads get very tight. So IT bands get extremely tight. Vastus lateralis being, you know, one of the biggest muscles in the body gets tight. So you want to release that because that's one of the most powerful engines that we have in our legs and especially with cycling. Um, but it also can make the IT bands tight. And if the IT bands get tight, we can get problems at the knee, but we can also get problems where it attaches at the hip. So the tight, the, 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 as the quads grow, they push out the IT band, and then the IT band get more taut and create problems at the attachments. But also the IT band is a thickening of the fascia lata that covers the quad, the vas lateralis. So if the vas lateralis is tight, then that fascia is attached to it, so then it's tight. And then the quad itself that doesn't work properly, but also the fascia won't move properly. So we usually have to release the quads regularly to make sure that one, they're flushed. We get rid of any knots or trigger points that build up, but also so that the IT band is more relaxed. So there's less pulling at each end of the attachments and it doesn't change his bike mechanics. And a lot of cyclists, they keep their knees close to the frame versus riding like this. So if they have a tight IT band, it gets a lot harder for them to do that and their knees end up coming out, which is also not ideal for recruitment of muscle power. It's also not aerodynamic, so. For more on how I do things on my road to Ironman, go to my Instagram or website.